Hello again everyone. This is my second video of a two-part lecture on motion in space, the last topic for Math 23. Before we proceed, make sure you have watched the first video where we discussed how the position of a particle in the three-dimensional coordinate space can be described by a vector function called the position function and denoted by r of t. From this position function, we derive the velocity vector function v of t and the acceleration vector function a of t. In this video, we study further the acceleration vector function by decomposing it into two components. That is, we will write the acceleration vector as the sum of two vectors, one in the direction of the unit tangent vector and one in the direction of the unit normal vector. By doing so, we try to explain the following phenomenon we all experience while inside the moving vehicle. So imagine you are inside a moving car. So as the car speeds up rapidly, your body is thrown back against the car seat's backrest. As the car drives around a curve and turns, your body is thrown towards the outside of the curve of the road. The more sharper the turn is, that is, the greater the curvature, the more that you experience this effect. This lesson will try to explain this effect by looking at the acceleration vector and decomposing it into components, one in the direction of the unit tangent and one in the direction of the unit normal vector. Furthermore, we will see that the curvature has a great role in this decomposition. That is why we experience this effect more if the curvature is greater. Now we go back to the motion of an object moving in space. Note that the velocity of this object is the derivative of its position function. And r prime of t is a vector in the same direction as the unit tangent vector. In fact, it is the product of the scalar norm of r prime of t and the vector capital T of t. From the previous video, we know that the norm of r prime of t is the speed of this particle, which we write to be the derivative of the distance with respect to t. Hence, the velocity vector function is equal to ds over dt times the vector capital T of t. Note that ds over dt is a scalar. Hence, we see that the velocity vector function is actually in the same direction as the unit tangent vector. Now, we look at the acceleration vector function which is the derivative of the velocity vector function. Since the velocity can be written as this product, we apply product rule for derivatives to express its derivative. Do you still remember the product rule for derivatives? Yes, that's right, d left plus left d right. So applying that formula, we have the unit tangent vector capital T times the second derivative of s with respect to t plus ds over dt times the derivative of the unit ve tangent vector, capital T prime of t. Now we know that capital T prime of t is a vector in the same direction as the unit normal vector. So it is a scalar multiple of the vector capital N of t. In fact, capital T prime of t is equal to the norm of t prime of t times the vector capital N of t. Furthermore, we know that ds over dt is actually the norm of r prime of t. Now, the norm of r prime of t is actually equal to the norm of r prime of t squared divided by norm of r prime of t. Hence, this quantity is equal to this quantity. Now, take a look at this quotient norm of t prime of t over norm of r prime of t. Does this expression look familiar? Yes, we have seen that in previous lecture videos. And this is the curvature of the curve. Therefore, the acceleration vector function can be written as the second derivative of s with respect to t times the vector capital T of t plus the derivative of s with respect to t squared times the curvature 
times the vector capital N of T. Notice that by writing the acceleration vector function in this way, we see that it is the sum of two vectors. One is a scalar multiple of the unit tangent vector, and the other is a scalar multiple of the unit normal vector. Hence, we can decompose the acceleration vector function as the sum of a vector in the same direction as the unit tangent vector and the vector in the same direction as the unit normal vector. In this expression, we will denote a sub capital T of T, the scalar multiple of the unit tangent vector. That is, we let a sub T of T be the second derivative of S with respect to T. And we will denote by a sub capital N of T, the scalar multiple of the vector capital N of T. That is, a sub capital N of T is the square of the derivative with respect to T of S times the curvature, kappa of T. Therefore, we can simply write the acceleration vector function as a of t equals a sub capital T times the vector capital T plus a sub capital N times the vector capital N. This scalar multiple a sub t is what we will call the scalar tangential component of the acceleration. And this scalar multiple a sub capital N is what we will call the scalar normal component of the acceleration. Take note that the scalar normal and the scalar tangential components of acceleration are just the scalar multiples of the normal vector and the unit tangent vector in the decomposition of the acceleration vector function. We remark that the tangential component of acceleration is the derivative of the speed. Therefore, it gives us the rate at which the speed is changing with respect to t. while the scalar normal component of acceleration gives the rate at which the velocity's direction is changing with respect to time. Note that the normal vector always points towards the inside of the curve. Therefore, as the car that you're riding in accelerates, you are thrown outside the curve as a reaction to this normal component of acceleration. Furthermore, a sub capital N of t involves the curvature kappa, which means that the greater the curvature, the greater the normal component of acceleration is, hence the greater the effect on a person riding on a moving vehicle. Let us try to explain the decomposition of the acceleration vector function more visually. We let r be the position function of an object moving in space, and we let theta be the angle between the acceleration vector function and the velocity vector function. So if we project the acceleration vector onto the velocity vector, we see that this projection is actually equal to a sub t times the unit tangent vector, capital T. This makes sense because the velocity vector is in the same direction, or in other words, parallel to the unit tangent vector. Hence, we see that projecting the acceleration vector onto the unit tangent vector, we have a scalar multiple of the unit tangent vector. In fact, it is the tangential component of the acceleration times the unit tangent vector. Similarly, if we project the acceleration vector onto the unit normal vector, we have the projection a sub capital N times the unit normal vector. Remember that the unit tangent vector is always perpendicular to the unit normal vector. Looking at this figure, we see that we form a right triangle with theta as one angle. Therefore, if we take the cosine of theta, that is equal to the length of this side over the hypotenuse. But the length of this projection is actually a sub t since capital T is a unit tangent vector. Hence, a sub capital t 
is actually equal to the length of the vector a times cosine theta. Or in other words, a sub capital T is the norm of capital A of t cosine theta. Now we introduce a factor, norm of v of t over norm of v of t. This factor is just equal to 1, hence these two quantities are still the same. Notice that the numerator is the dot product of v and a. Hence, the tangential component of acceleration can be written as the dot product of the velocity and acceleration over the norm of the velocity. Similarly, we take the sine of theta that is equal to the length of this side over the hypotenuse. But the length of this side is equal to a sub capital N of t since capital N of t is a unit normal vector. Hence, capital A sub N of t is equal to the length of the vector A of t times sine theta or norm of A of t sine theta. Again, we introduce the factor v of t over v of t, which is equal to 1. Notice that the numerator now is actually the norm of the cross product of v and a. Hence, the normal component of the acceleration can be written as the norm of the cross product of the velocity and acceleration over the norm of the velocity. This gives us an alternative formula for the tangential and normal components of acceleration using only the velocity and the acceleration functions. It is interesting to note that the formula for the normal component of acceleration, in this case, does not involve computing for the curvature kappa. These formulas are easier to use if you are given the position function r of t, because from r of t we can compute velocity and acceleration and hence, we can compute the tangential and normal components of the acceleration. Let us see how to use that formula in this example. So suppose we have a particle moving in space according to the position function r of t equals t t squared t cubed. Let us compute the tangential and normal components of the acceleration at t equals 1. Going back to the previous formulas, we see that we need the velocity and acceleration vector functions. So first we compute v of t, which is r prime of t. So therefore, v of t is derivative of t equals 1, derivative of t squared is 2t, and derivative of 3t cubed is 3t squared. Hence, v of t is 1, 2t, 3t squared. From this, we see that the velocity at t equals 1 is equal to the vector 1, 2, 3. Next, we compute the acceleration vector function, which is the derivative of the velocity vector function. Therefore, equal to derivative of 1 equals 0, derivative of 2t is 2, and the derivative of 3t squared is 6t. Evaluating at t equals 1, we have the acceleration at t equals 1 is the vector 0 to 6. Now, we are ready to compute for the normal and tangential components of acceleration at t equals 1. First note that the tangential component of acceleration, a sub capital T, evaluated at 1, is equal to the dot product of the velocity and the acceleration over the norm of the velocity, all evaluated at t equals 1. Hence, we have the dot product of the vector 1, 2, 3 and the vector 0, 2, 6 over the norm, the vector 1, 2, 3, which is equal to 1 times 0 plus 2 times 2 plus 3 times 6, which is equal to 22, over the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is equal to the square root of 14. Simplifying, we get the tangential component of acceleration at t equals 1 equals 11 square root of 14 over 7. On the other hand, the normal component of acceleration at t equals 1 is equal to the norm the cross product of v of 1 and a of 1 all over the norm of v of 1. Computing for the cross product, 
we see that 1, 2, 3 cross 0, 2, 6 is actually 6 minus 6, 2. Now, if you don't believe this, you can try this on your own. And also, we have also computed for the norm of the vector 1, 2, 3 to be square root of 14. Computing for the norm of the vector 6 minus 6, 2, we have square root of 76 over the square root of 14. Finally, simplifying, we get the square root of 266 all over 7. This is the normal component of acceleration at t equals 1. Here are some more exercises you can do on your own. This marks the end of this lecture. Please make sure to watch the discussion video that comes along with this lecture to better understand all the topics that we have discussed. This also marks the end of all the lectures in Math 22. All the Math 22 teachers have put effort in making these videos so that you can study all the remaining topics on your own, upon your own pace, at your own time. We hope that you learn something from this lecture videos and we hope that these vi videos are able to equip you with a proper knowledge of the concepts in Math 22 that is needed on your next subject, may it be Math 23 or other subjects that require these topics. We hope to see you all again soon. Thank you very much.